Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to this week's episode of Mary's Garage. Today, we're heading up north to Pismo. I took the boys and a friend of theirs, uh, shoot, probably six weeks ago now, up to Pismo to do some camping, wheeling, exploring, and just have some quality dude time with my little bros. And we had a blast. I love taking the kids up there. It's one of their favorite places. But if you remember from my subsequent videos, I did bend my frame on that trip. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly uh, what happened and show you the video. It's entertaining. We just had a blast up there exploring and like I said, the frame bend is not that big of a deal, but uh, you know, it was a learning experience. Before we get into that though, I have a bunch of cool stuff that I've been doing on the truck. Just little things, stuff that I needed to check off on my list. List that uh, I haven't really been able to get much done on. I just haven't been motivated. And I realized like I can't start my rear links conversion until I've completely finished the front links conversion. And there's a bunch of little electrical things I need to take care of. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna show you guys that and then we'll jump into the video. So let's go take a look at what I've been doing. Um, I think you guys will dig it. Merrick's Garage. First things first, you will see that I finally have my fenders back in. It took me long enough to do this, but I finally was able to check this off the list. And I've got the fenders back in again, which is awesome, because they just, uh, they do protect the engine compartment from a lot of mud and crap. And uh, yeah, I'm glad to have these back in. A little bit of cutting and trimming, actually quite a lot of cutting and trimming, kind of got away from me here. But they are in and installed, which I am stoked on. And then let's take a look. A lot of you guys have asked how I did these LED pods that were in here. Well, that is it. As you can see, it was just a piece of angle iron that uh, I welded to the core support to allow them to bolt right in. But as you can see, I'm missing a couple. These things were dead on arrival. You know, I've done videos before on um, Chinese LEDs and you kind of get what you pay for. You know, I never really had any big expectations of these things competing with the top dollar stuff. But, you know, I've had good luck and I haven't had anything that didn't work. Surprisingly, all four of these uh, three by three pods were DOA. Um, I ran them directly off the battery. I ran them off a, an inverter inside. I ran them off a battery in the truck. I tried everything. Uh, I pulled them apart and checked all the solders. I went direct to the power supply and bypassed the wiring. No go, they did not work. So um, yeah, buyer beware. That's what you're gonna get when you pay $30 for uh, four LED light pods. So here's the voltage that my um, charger is putting out. But when I connect up these guys, I'm getting nothing, nothing. And whereas the new one, there it is. So I have no idea why, but these guys all didn't work. So these guys are gonna go in. If you guys remember from the John Bull video, I had some issues with my trans cooler. Uh, basically the trans cooler had lost power and so it wasn't running. So I fixed all that. There's my trans cooler and everything's gonna be dialed in and running out of this guy that I gotta get a cover and, and fuse in. What I'm looking to do with my trans cooler is I want to be able to turn it on before the thermostat hits. I have an inline thermostat that is triggered at 180 degrees to turn on the fans to keep the transmission cool. Now 180 degrees is, is fine, that's, that's a good temperature for them to come on. I would like to have a little bit more control, I'd like to be able to turn them on earlier. Um, so. That is harder than I thought. I'm gonna show you guys my wiring diagram because to get that done properly took a little bit of ingenuity and a little bit of help from some smarter people than I. But the plan is essentially I'm gonna have a switch on the dash that allows me to bypass the inline thermostat and deliver power directly to the, the fans. So as soon as I see the temperature starting to move, I can just flip that switch straight away. Uh, the other thing I've also done is I have put some uh, I put some switches on my uh, radiator fans. 
they are on all the time. Pretty much as soon as I get up to operating temperature, they're gonna be running and they are loud. Loud, 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 loud. <laughs> Now, they work phenomenally, and so I'm not that worried about the noise, but there are times, you know, when I'm pulling into a parking lot or I'm dropping the kids off at school and I pull up to a crosswalk, the truck is already big and in your face. The last thing I need is the fans screaming when I pull up, which they always are. So I've wired two switches that will allow me to independently turn off the fans. Um, not for a long time. I know what you guys are thinking. Don't turn off your fans. Well, I'm talking for like 30 seconds as I sit at the crosswalk. I just want to be able to silence the truck a little bit so that it isn't so in your face when I'm uh, around other people. Coming over here, you will see that in my PacFab harness, I've got this fuse panel. And this fuse box, sorry, has two relays inside it that are for my fans. I just need to tee into these lines, and then I'm gonna run it to the switches inside, which are, let me show you guys those. So these are just gonna be connected up to the fans, and they are just gonna bypass the signal that goes to the PCM, and uh, make sure that the fans aren't getting triggered to turn on. They're not gonna be carrying any power because I don't want power from the fans being drawn down over this voltage drop. So yeah, that's what these guys are gonna be for. And then moving over here, I'm gonna have another switch down in here to control the, the radio fan, the transmission cooler fans. That will be down in here. Also put the tube doors back on. These things are great. The kids love driving in it when it's got the tube doors on. I love driving in it when I've got the tube doors on. It's just, it's just a, a blast. And I finally got some mirrors that I can see behind me. I mean, that, that's huge. I haven't had mirrors for years. I have to keep leaning out the door. So I found these. I'm gonna link to them down below in my Amazon store. Uh, but yeah, the doors are in. Again, ugh. A little bit of a tight fit sometimes, but that's to be expected with a truck like this. Rock and roll. Yeah, so the fans are loud. Can you hear that right now? Listen. Howling. Okay. So let's go flip the switch. And, uh... is that yeah I like once again this isn't gonna be a all the time kind of thing it's gonna be 30 seconds at a time at like a stoplight or something because it's loud and it scares the children let's go turn it back on before I overheat So here's the wiring diagram that uh, I've got together. So my battery obviously supplying power over to the thermostat, uh, running through a 15 amp fuse. Both sides are hot in this drawing. I will have a diode to prevent back feeding from the fans to the thermostat when I have the hot side running here, but then on the other side of the thermostat, this is what I'm gonna run down to the relay and then I'm also gonna have a power switch going directly over to the fans. So what that's gonna enable me to do out of this switch right here, which will also be delivering 12 volts, I'll be able to flip this switch and bypass the thermostat, enabling me to turn on the fans prematurely. The reason I wanna do that is as I know things are gonna start getting heated up, I'd rather put the fans on uh, before it gets hot. So uh, yeah, this was... Uh, a challenge to get figured out, but I think this is gonna work. If you disagree, please let me know down below. Yeah, so uh, a lot of stuff done. Checking off the list. The list is still growing, obviously. I'm gonna be starting on the links here shortly, but uh, I do wanna knock out all this other stuff and just get it put to bed. Yeah, never ending, but it's fun and enjoyable. This is where I spend my evenings. Let's go to Pismo.
doesn't get much better. Pretty sweet morning up here at Oceano Dunes. Really glad we're here. I'm sorry I haven't got that much video for you guys yet. I've just been enjoying the boys, man. They're having a blast up here. and uh, Sometimes I think it's best that you just let kids run feral. They're out there like collecting sticks and poking fires and throwing sand. All the stuff that they're not supposed to do, but deep down inside we all want to do. Yeah. It's a very special place. It's kind of cool to come up here and just be, well, apart from the sound of people, you can kind of feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, something doesn't look right there, huh? Look at that. And then, yeah, but. The other side is a lot more obvious. I'll show you that guy. Yeah, that's not supposed to be there. Um, but we're good. Yeah. I may actually just be able to straighten that plate it. I'm going to be dropping the tank when I do all this work anyway, but my suspension's not going to be too much fun on the way home. So apparently this shaft is twisting. I would guess that every time this rotates during articulation, during steering, that it's unthreading this just a little bit. So I'm gonna need to cut down this some more and put another lock washer on. But let's fix it right now.